Hey, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, thank you for joining us on the Purple Teaming uh, webcast today. <laughs> it, it sounds kind of funny. I, I always, I, I'm always like Purple Nurple or, you know, it, every time I think of Purple Teaming, which you don't hear a lot out there, right? So as we talk about this, we'll talk purple about... Nurple. Purple Nurple. I don't know. Nurple just... It... <laughs> Why do I not know where that reference is from? It's probably a movie. What is that from? I'm, I'm not going to explain it. I, most people out there probably understand where it's from, but uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this Florida weather—it's killing me. Uh, uh, at least, it, at least it's not snowing like it was in Denver the yesterday. Weather. I think it's the uh, the office. I'm concerned with all these water bottles all being next to each other that we're not going to know who's is who. <laughs> that was your this one's why. We need to do like the red solo cup with our names on them. I apologize. We're we're not very coordinated today. You, 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 me just getting the webcast up and going. Wait, wait, wait. I was about to throw my computer out the window. Wait, wait, wait. You said today. That wow. implies we do this well all the time. <laughs> this is true. All right, so quickly, a little bit about us. I'm James Jardine, Principal Security Consultant with Secure Ideas. Um, a lot of people I see are uh, regulars on some of our webcasts, which I, I love to see. You know, I so like that. I like we, we don't have to do a whole lot of talking about ourselves, but if you don't know, I come from a development background. Um, I've done course authoring uh, and instructing for SANS. Uh, I podcast very regularly. As a matter of fact, I was just recording a podcast right before this webcast started. And uh, I also blog a bit uh, and that type of stuff. So was, that's, was that really the 100th episode of Down the Rabbit Hole? It is the 100th episode, yeah. Man. I don't know when it's ex actually sent to go out, but... That but was the, hundred, the, that's the one episode. we recorded, yeah. Because I, I thought I just saw an advertisement that I retweeted for the 92nd episode. <laughs> yeah, we we record early. We don't record right before the thing. Huh. We okay, have episodes cool. stacked up, yeah. So he's got eight episodes now. Uh, no, we don't have all of those recorded yet. So wait, you recorded the 100th episode at like the 95th spot? It's about availability. When is the person available to record? Yeah, this is how it works, man. That's, that bothers me. That's like, so it was the 95th episode that you're going to lie and call the 100th. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, you know. It could be the 98th. It could be the 100th. I don't know. We have other episodes recorded. Just waiting. They're in a queue. Could it be the 101? Nope. Couldn't. Not even sure 101 is the right way to say that. Huh. Okay, people well, are bored with you already. I, it's one of those days. <laughs> Um, I'm Kevin Johnson. Again, like we said, a lot of you know who we are. Um, course author, IONS faculty. Actually headed out to an IONS event next week. I'm going to be in Minneapolis. Have you ever been to Minneapolis? I have. Is there anything there? I mean, I feel like I'm bashing the city, and I'm not. I've just never been. It's the Twin Cities, man. Minneapolis, St. Paul. There's all kinds of stuff there. So I'm going to both? <laughs> How close are know. Minneapolis and St. Paul? They're close. Really? Yes. I guess then I should figure out which one I'm going to. <laughs> if I remember correctly, they're closer than Dallas and uh, Fort, Fort, Worth. Fort Worth. Is that the one that's like 30 miles away or something like that? I don't know. I, I think I, they're closer. Huh. Yeah, they're, they're very close. Well, if you're in Minneapolis and you're going to be there next week, so will I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually flying into Baltimore tomorrow. Um I might be on a sailboat race. I don't know what to do about that. If you are, there better be pictures. That's there better be pictures. No, that'll be me dying. I, I said to Laura that if I get on the sailboats, I'll probably fall off and drown. So uh, <laughs> I'm also a podcaster. We need to. We've been saying this for about a week. We need to record a perpetual evil perspective. Uh, open source project lead, uh, course author, and instructor. Really excited about the July course we just announced. Uh, we're doing a live event, but that's neither here nor there. So. Let's start talking about purple teaming. Purple. Now I'm gonna. Now all I'm gonna think about is purple nurple. I know. I did. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> probably said. That. I blame the guy that named it purple teaming. That wasn't me. I know. We'll talk about that though. So, so yeah. So if we're gonna talk about red team. We're gonna talk about blue team, right? And th these are fairly common terms. Mm -hmm. Most people have heard of these. Except, I'm surprised by how many people will say to me because I'll say, "Hey, I'm a red team member," and they'll be like, "What does that mean?" I think I asked me if it meant communist. Like, <laughs> like, what? You, you are kind of a communist. I am. Yeah, um, totally. You know, we'll, we'll talk about, when we're talking about pen testing, what's missing 
from our our typical pen test where we come in and play the red team, uh, you know, and this idea of purple teaming or uh, what back blue in team testing, yeah, blue team testing. Well, let's we'll talk about some of the, where the, some of that <laughs> stuff came from uh, and the benefits of testing these things together. Um, right. And you know, this the, the idea of the webcast came out because I overheard Kevin on a phone call talking about purple teaming and, and giving this credit off, you know, to other places. It was like, actually an IMS. You were oh, talking God. about this. I, I remember you talking about this back in a few years ago at like an InfraGuard meeting. You gave this presentation. He's like, no. And then he, he looks up on his computer and he's like, you're right. Back in, you know, yeah, I, 2007, I had this conversation. Basically, I got proof that James has stalked me for years. <laughs> yeah, I just have a good a, a good. Uh, memory. Good memory, uh, stalker, whatever you uh, want to call it. What goes on, yeah. So for those that don't really understand, uh, the idea for the red team, yeah. and we'll talk about them first because that's what we do. We're biased. Uh, so we're a little bit biased. We like the red team. But you're playing the bad guys, right? You're We're not the bad guys, but we're coming at your system as if we are the bad guys. Our goal is to test your controls and see if we have some way to get around them, right? To be able to hopefully provide you the information of, hey, this is how I got past this. But you always hear about a penetration test being, oh, well, these guys are coming in just to see how many records they can get, right? And we, you know, if you look at CCDC, yep. right? You got the red and the blue team and the red guys are the guys that are trying to hack all the computers, right? You're playing that, that bad guy role. You're using the same tools that hackers use, yep. right? We're using the rules of engagement and scope limitations. Right, right. right. We, we, we obviously <laughs> have permission. <laughs> we always have permission. Uh, there, there's lots of differences between true bad guy and red team guy. Yeah, yeah. And and we get asked a lot of times, you know, like, well, uh, what does a red team consist of? Why do you do it? Everything else like that. Um, and, and keep in mind that the main idea here is is somebody testing stuff. We're not talking about an auditor, right? Like somebody coming in and auditing your stuff. A pen test, uh, a red team may work in tandem with an auditor, right? As a matter of fact, when I worked at Bank of America, I was actually on the red team for audit. So it was in tandem as they were doing an audit, we would be doing testing, but the auditors are not red team members. Because if you started to deal with this purple teaming with an auditor, it really doesn't match up, right? As we'll as we'll explain as we get into it further. Right. Yeah. And it is, you know, as I mentioned, right? We're using those hacker techniques, right? It's adversarial. Yeah. Um, as opposed to the auditor role where you're not, right? You're just, hey, I want to see how you're doing. <laughs> right. When we come in as a, even if you're angry, the auditor is there. That doesn't make it adversarial. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent point, right? It, just because they're there, yeah. and you don't like them. That's a little different, right? I mean, this is an active role to go in and actually look at this and see, you know, what is your system doing, right? And so why do we bring the red team in? Compliance, checkbox. I, I can't tell you how many times it's like, well, why did you call us? Well, we were told we had to. Oh, so this is going to be a popular activity. I, I always find it interesting when I get an email from somebody that says, I'm not looking to just check a box here. Right, like, which is we actually got one of those yesterday, I, right? Yeah. I love seeing those emails because people are actually getting more involved. They're interested in. I actually want to see what my security weaknesses are. Right. Not and and I don't know. Maybe when they say I just want a checkbox, it's a look. All I'm telling you right now is you don't have to try very hard. Right. I just want you to test. Just say you say tested. Check the box. Right. Maybe that's an indication of I just really don't want you to try very hard. I had I actually had a customer once. Well, I shouldn't call them a customer. We turned them away, but uh, they actually came to us and said, "Hey, we want a pen test, but we don't want you to exploit anything, and, and we just want you to do a bone scan." I was like, "Well, that's not a pen test." Well, yeah, but we need to have a pen test. Okay, well, let's do a pen test. Well, we don't want you to exploit. Well, anything. that comes back to your rules of engagement. Yes, and it was like, ah, uh, no. And when we talk about red teaming, keep in mind that there's multiple pieces, right? We're talking about the network, right? Which which we see all the time. Hey, I want to network pen test? I need a pen test for my network, internal, external, whatever. Uh, we also see, and of course, I think we're biased or 
web and application stuff because um, lots of people come to us about web stuff and applications and mobile apps and things like that. But for us, it's actually quite common for people to say, hey, I want this tested. That last one, though, is the one I find funny is that so often while red teaming your users, I think is important. I think it's critical that you do it at least at some level. So many people are like, eh, I'm not so worried about that. Don't, don't test those. We know they'll click the link. They'll fall for it. Don't test them. And I think that that's a, a, a symptom of truly misunderstanding why we do red teaming, right? We don't do red teaming to say, are you hackable? Everybody's hackable, right. right? At some level with a determined enough attacker, they're going to get in. The idea of red teaming, if you're doing it right, is to see what were they able to get, right? You know, uh, when they did that attack, when that user clicked the link, when we found that SQL injection in the database, in, in the web application, where did we pivot from there? Were we able to get to credit card numbers? Were we able to get to those sensitive servers or what have you? Um, not just did I hack you? But when I hacked you, what happened? Well, and not listed on here, right? We list users, but we don't list like physical, what? Yeah. right? You know, which is another aspect of it of, it's not, can I get into your building, right? I mean, we, we've done the tests where we, you know, we have goals. Can you get in and get laptops out? Can yeah. you get in and get to this specific room? Yeah. Or maybe it's a bank. Can you get in the vault? Yeah. Or, you know, or could you get past these security guards? Did you get past the front desk? Uh, it was funny. Denise actually found last night somebody selling a FedEx truck. And I'm not real clear. Like, was it a real FedEx truck that was shoved off as excess and somebody bought it and now they want to get rid of it? Or is it somebody painted a truck to look like a FedEx truck, right? But she was like, hey, you guys have the uniforms. You should buy this truck. And it's like, uh, I was in 100% agreement. I know you I were. I think we need a FedEx truck. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> Mainly because it was too damn expensive. <laughs> you, can you imagine sitting out in front of the office, the FedEx truck, and then another FedEx truck pulls up. What's the guy going to do? <laughs> hey. It would be hilarious. It I, would be almost as hilarious as the Google Maps truck car <laughs> driving by. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, but, you know, you're right. I mean, that's the point of what we're doing with the red, red team is we're going further. You know, it's not like a Voln scan. It's not just this. It's let me see how far I can actually take this and, and see where we can go from that. So then on the other side, you've got the blue team, right, which oftentimes we say, right, the blue team, th this is the defenders. And <laughs> yeah. you look at the, the, an event like CCDC, if anybody, you know, follows those events, they're kind of cool, but, right, it's that college... Uh, what does it even stand for? College Cyber Defense, defense Competition, Compet I think, or Maybe. something? Maybe. I don't know. I've never been. I've, I, I've never, never been. Had. I've actually watched uh, <clears throat> when John and Paul actually did live broadcasting on Paul.com stuff from CCDC, like, two years ago. And it was actually very interesting. Like Paul.com had a whole bunch of stuff on there, which is Security Weekly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, he, he had like awesome stuff on there where they were talking about what was going on. They were interviewing blue team members and red team members. And it was, it was interesting to see like how it really works. But, you know, it's this idea that, okay, we've got some systems. The blue team, your goal is to protect these systems. Yep. Know that, what's happening. Know what's happening. Protect them. Not only real time, but hey, I need. I know I need to apply patches. I know I need to do this stuff. But also, man, somebody just gained access to my system. How do I mitigate that? How do I respond to it and go, right? So blue team, it, you know, we switched to red team a long time ago because of, well, it's easier. <laughs> Let's just go with, we're lazy. I've said that for years. I was it's, a blue team member, and then I realized it was hard, <laughs> and I became a red team member. Because as blue team, <laughs> right? You have to cover everything. Red yeah, team, you right find right one right. thing. We say it all the time. We should make a recording, so we just hit a button, right? A sound Actually, bite. we are making a recording right now. <laughs> well, we can do a sound bite for it. Um, so the blue team, they have to defend against everything. They have to know every possible way that somebody could get in. And we're starting to actually talk more about the fact that, um, you know, security in some ways are making this push towards it's not about knowing every single way to get in and defending that, but about how do we react yeah. 
when somebody gets in because we know people are getting in so that's analyzing of your logs knowing what plans you have in place which which blows my mind how often just from an IT perspective we talk to people and say hey are you looking at your logs how often do you review them when there's a problem how did you know there was a problem oh somebody complained did you look at the logs any other time no I'm too busy uh, what are you busy doing fighting fires Huh, I wonder if looking at those logs would have helped you yeah. not have to fight those fires. And not not knowing the exact statistics, but a vast majority of breaches that happen, the reason they know they happen because an external party told them. I mean, what, what, did, the, what did that FBI announce just recently? 3,000 breaches last year? They notified the organization? How, how bad is that? How do you run your IDS? The FBI tells us when there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I don't need snort. <laughs> I have an FBI agent. He calls me periodically and tells me I've been hacked. <laughs> I feel as though that's misappropriation of use of the FBI. But hey, they pay taxes. <laughs> Just not sure it's the most efficient intrusion detection system. <laughs> it is kind of interesting. So analyzing those logs is important, right? So there's a lot you have to know to be a blue team member. Yeah. Right? I mean, you, you have to be watching. Fires are going on. You have to understand your systems. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, from a red team perspective, I don't care about how the fire's going on. Yeah. Right? I, I have one specific goal. It, it doesn't matter that you have an upgrade, that, that I, your users are unhappy. That, that right. You, you didn't get a lot of sleep last night. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know. I got a job. I decide as a red team member that Tuesday's my best day because, hey, Happens to be Patch Tuesday. I know they're going to be busy doing something else. <laughs> yeah. Right. Those are the things that that separate those two teams, and that's what kind of makes it difficult um, for them. Switch back here. Uh, but we have to realize that blue team is not just security. Yeah, and, and that's actually a very common mistake. Uh, at least when I deal with people, is that they focus blue team on security. Right? I'm the guy watching the IDS, or I'm the lady <clears throat> uh, managing the SIM, what have you, uh, or whatever acronym of the day we want to use. But everybody is part of the blue team. I, I, you know, uh, security, obviously. I, I, I think that everybody knows that. But, but IT is part of the blue team. Right? If you're managing the servers, if you're on the help desk, if you're dealing with desktop machines, you're part of the blue team. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just yeah. mentioned applying patches. Yeah. I mean, that's not a security function. I, except in some rare organizations. I've, I've actually dealt with, and I laughed at it. Like, seriously? You have your security team applying patches to your server. Well, they're security patches. Do they apply the non-security patches? Well, they might as well. They're applying the other patches. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's brilliant. Um, right. But in, in most cases, absolutely. you know, patch management, that type of stuff, it's not a direct security function. Well, no, while it does tie into security because some of those patches are security patches. Right. Right. It's it's not a direct function. Your users, you know, oh, user awareness. Don't click that link. Yeah. Or what is it? Don't click shit. <laughs> yeah. Don't click that. Yeah. That's part of your defense. But when something happens, right? What is your incident response policy if and I had this happen at a company, right? A virus got in through mail, somebody clicked it, it started spreading like wildfire to all the other people. I thought AV was dead. And more people clicked it. <laughs> of course. Right? So what's the response that we have here to be able to say, look, something just got in the building, not only from a security standpoint, what do I do, but what do the users do? How do the users react to this? How, how do we alert the users? There's so much to, and, and it's not just people, right? User. It's an infrastructure. It's that yeah. the policies and procedures that exist around the, the whole environment that encompasses that blue team. And more than likely, your users are who are going to notice the badness, right? right. They're going to they're gonna say, hey, I clicked something and it asked me this, or, or they're going to say, hey, my computer's running slow, or hey, I went to the website, and instead of us getting the, hey, welcome to the website, we got a, you've been compromised by anonymous or whatever. Sure. You know, like, 
It, how many times have you had somebody tell you that they they went to your website and it came up with a tri uh, certificate error? Yeah. Right where you know your certificate expired or something. That's I mean, never happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, but something like that. We we're like, oh my god, our certificates expired. Yeah. How did we miss that? How yeah. did we forget? Right? How did you miss that? <laughs> it is a good question. <laughs> right. I mean that. That type of stuff, there's just so, I mean, you, you do realize stuff. people are now looking at our website to see if our certificate is expired. <laughs> <laughs> it has not. We should pull it up. No. It has not. Uh, <laughs> well, but, I don't think it has. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, the entire company <laughs> is the blue team. Yeah. You know, when you look at it from that perspective, that everything that goes into that. And so, I mean, we have questions of how do you test that blue team procedures? We ask all the time. How do we know, and I think this leads us into this whole what's missing, right? How do we know, does our blue team work, yeah. right? Do, we know that we have controls in place. We know we have a firewall. Well, just yesterday, you and I were um, talking. You were testing an application. You were able to get it to allow you to upload a file, right? How do we know what they would do with that? As the red team member, all we know is, the application accepted it. Took a file, told me a path. Right? Told you it, put there it somewhere. It <clears throat> Everything looked good. But that's really, like it says here, not the whole picture, right? You don't know. Did it get quarantined? I almost said compromised. Did it get quarantined <laughs> by AV? Did the application report that it wrote that, but then didn't really because it wasn't the right file type or what have you? Um, what would happen afterwards? Well, you know. You know, many times, especially when we're sitting on site, right, we run scans. I mean, we kick off Nessus or something like that against a, a mainframe, right? Something that, hey, did anybody notice that we're running this? Yeah. You know, and stuff that's not normal. Or uh, what did we have? We had something where we booted up one of the machines that had. Yeah, I was just, just going to tell that one, right? Because we're, we're on site at an organization, and I love this. I love this part of that organization. They put us in this glass room, <laughs> right? Like all the developers, all the IT are sitting there. We're in this room. It's glass walls, and we're supposed to subtly test <laughs> the systems. <laughs> and um, Monday of the, the job, we sit down. James and I are there, and um, they give us a laptop. <clears throat> For us to do some client side testing like they didn't want us to mess with their users but they wanted to see if we could bypass their endpoint control and stuff like that fairly common so as we're doing the initial setup meeting right uh, we've got our contact there we're doing stuff i reach over i open up the laptop and it starts up you know i power it up not what was it 10 minutes later not, not even right this guy comes running in and he he looked a little panicky I, I'm not going to say he was panicking, but he looked a little, right? I mean, yeah. And he's like, what are you guys doing to our antivirus server, right? It's like, um, nothing. <laughs> we <laughs> we haven't done anything. We haven't even plugged our laptops in, right? <laughs> All we did was turn on their laptop. And it's like, why do you think we're doing this? It's under attack. What do you mean it's under attack, right? So we start digging into this with this guy, and it turns out, and I always get a kick out of this. Because we were doing a pen test, they were looking a little more stringently than they normally do. And the guy noticed, I don't know, let's say 30 packets connect, you know, go toward their antivirus server. And he assumed we were attacking it. He was their antivirus expert. <laughs> and so I said to the guy, Dude, it looks like all that traffic is is the client agent basically reporting in to say, hey, I'm here. Do you have any new signatures? Is there a new configuration? I want to register with the system. But because he never really paid attention to that stuff, except when we were there, now it looked abnormal. Right? It was like, ah, I'm under attack. How are you under attack? Right? And of course, it must be those evil Haxor guys over there in that glass room because uh, they're mean. They have uh, professional evil shirts on. Uh, you have one on right now? Uh, always so, promoting 
always promoting the company. I, I'm just going to say that promoting it to me is probably <laughs> not the most effective use. We just mentioned it on ooh, our webcast. Our webcast. But, but, but you know, still, yeah. And what do we do when we do most penetration tests? Every place I've worked, it's, you know, it's kind of under the radar. Absolutely. There's a few people that know about it, and it's usually security guys. Yep. Right? But it's like, don't tell anybody else. I don't want them to know. I want to see what happens, right? But <clears throat> it, that's good and bad, right? There, there yeah. are some pros to that, but the downside to that is, in using this example of this guy, yeah. I mean, if we weren't sitting there and he didn't know, you would have never picked up on anything, which, okay, that's a learning experience. But he also wouldn't have been looking extra stringent and saying, you know what, I know people are looking at this. That's you. Or what we see a lot of times is we ask companies, hey, you know, we just ran a thousand requests at your login screen. Anybody notice it? Well, we did, but we didn't report it because yeah, the yeah. pen test was going on. It must have been the pen testers. I, I had, um, we won't name names, Verizon's. Uh, managed services, working for a company, and uh, when we did a whole bunch of attacks, we compromised their system, we pivoted through the DMZ into the internal network, I mean, total compromise, right? And we said to our customer, hey, did you ask that unnamed company, uh, why did they not report this to you? They actually answered that, no, I didn't get the email, this is what I was told. Right, that they were told that they recognized the IP address as a known pen tester's IP. So they just didn't report it. And I, I said, really? They recognized my cable modem from home? <laughs> right? Oh, it's Comcast. It must be a known pen tester. Um, it was like such a bogus, stupid excuse. Oh, yeah, I detected it, but I knew it was a pen tester. <laughs> Yeah, it's you know there there's so much so much wrong with that. Yeah, uh, but you know I mean, like we said, blue team they put together all kinds of policies. They put out all, all this stuff. How do you test those? Do you do that independently, where you have a <clears throat> hey I've got a red team test where you know it's our annual pen test. We're scheduled a week for it. They're going to hammer us, and we're going to do this over here. Yeah. And then at another time, That's we're going to schedule this blue team test where we're going to say you know what. I want to make sure that our stuff works. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and break my system and make sure that it, the procedures we have in place work. How many times do you actually do your failover to your failover site? I worked for a company that for years, when we did our DR testing, we made it to D. <laughs> Never quite made it to <laughs> DR. You know, I mean, are you testing? How many companies find out later on when they've had an issue that their tape backup system didn't actually record anything. <laughs> I, I worked at a company. We got hacked. We had a compromise. We had a we had um, an incident, right? And damn it, we had incident response procedures. They pulled up the incident response procedures and they called the first person on the list that was supposed to be on it. And that guy had left the company five years before that. And so they moved to the second person. And that person had left the company two or three years before that. And then they moved to the third person. And the third person said, oh, I'm no longer in that role and I don't have access and I don't know who has it now. I mean, they made it all the way down to like 10 people down the list. And I get a phone call. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm not the point person on this. I'm just one of the admins at that time, right? I don't know what to do. I don't know who to call, right? And, but they had them documented that every year when we had the audit, they, they would say, do you have your incident response procedure? Yes, we do. Here you go, right? And hey, they look good, <laughs> right? Um, we actually had one of the people on the, the list. It was like, and I'm going to make up a name, but it was similar to the John Smith but there was no contact information for the person. It was just, look up John Smith in the the, the company directory. Yeah, well, it was a company of 5,000 people, right? There were more than one John Smith. Uh, they had no idea which one it was supposed to be, right? Like, uh... well, I mean, you look at it, you know, think of like your home and home system, yeah. right? It's great that you can sit there and run test functions on it, but at some point, don't you want to set it and open the door? I mean, just to, to ensure. The police show up. No, I mean, you know, look, I, I want to make sure that when I do that, like, for, for example, I use Safe Touch. 
yeah. for all of all of my stuff, right? And you know, it's it's two-way communicator, right? The alarm goes off within 30 seconds or whatever. Somebody comes over the thing and starts talking to me, yep. right? And they can tell me that that's the procedure, but if my alarm never goes off, how do I know that when a burglar actually breaks in, that actually happened? Well, when I first moved to Jacksonville, we were in an apartment, my wife and I, and um, three o'clock in the morning, alarm goes off, right? You want to talk about, Wah! right? You wake up, your alarm's going off, it's middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, we go through the house, uh, nobody's there, none of the windows are open, none of the doors, right? Nothing. We, we have no concept of why the alarm went off, but it's still going off, right? <laughs> so it's not like I imagined it, <laughs> right? The cats were freaking out, my wife was freaking out. So I call the alarm company, which at that time was not Safe Touch. We are with them now. Um, <clears throat> probably shouldn't admit that, right? Why? I don't know. You got a sign on the front of your house that says Safe Touch. That's a good point. Um, the burglars see that and they go the other way. <laughs> oh man, that house has Safe Touch. I gotta go this you way. You watch those commercials too much. But <laughs> so I call the company, right? The, the company that the the apartment complex had put in and all this kind of stuff, and they're like, "We don't know what you're talking about." My alarm, you can hear it in the background. It's still going off, right? Because I, I couldn't turn it off. Um, it wouldn't, right? I'm punching in my code. It wouldn't turn off. It turned out there was something faulty with the system. But they hadn't gotten an alert. They hadn't gotten an alarm. They had no idea. And I say to the guy, okay, well, that's a problem. And he's like, oh, no, it's no issue. Nobody would be breaking in, right? And his focus was on, <laughs> it was a false alarm. And my focus was on, why didn't you get that false alarm? <laughs> and that's, I understood it was false. <laughs> not to say, you know, go out and, you know, all of a sudden set off all your alarms, but, you know, it's the same thing, you know, I, I was thinking about it as I was just thinking of that. You, you realize how unscripted we are. <laughs> that, like a smoke detector. Yeah. How many, you know, oh, you should test it once a week, right? Like the, the Every Nest. Every time I cook at home. The Nest smoke detector says you should test it once a week, right? Yeah. So you push the button. Oh, yeah, everything's fine. Should I ever light a match under it? Just yeah, smoke to... like... doesn't push the button. <laughs> <laughs> smoke doesn't push that button. Yeah. How do I know that sensor still works? You know, and yeah, it, and that's kind of the idea of what we're talking about with like the red team would actually light a fire. <laughs> no, right. don't turn your house on fire, okay? But it's not a good idea. How do you turn a house on fire? Just curious. Yeah, light the couch on fire. See if the smoke detects. <laughs> okay. We did not tell you to do that yeah. and i hold no liability <laughs> if you do it i can just see that right <laughs> <laughs> they said to test it for real fire but that's what we have to, that's what we're not getting when we do these individual tests yeah. blue team's out here doing this and saying you know what let's pretend <coughs> like cross-site scripting got through our WAF. no let's actually work together and, and do this because you also have the issue that blue team may not be as up on all the latest threats that are coming out. How are these attack vectors going on? We, you know, go back to the example of the upload of the file. That upload capability wasn't even available through the UI. Yeah. Right. This was, you know, what I looked at this. I saw that. Hey, wait a minute. You guys are sending down everything I need to upload a file. You have a web service to upload it. Does this work? You know, and, it, and it's functionality <laughs> that either is new, or it hasn't been removed fully, right? Like, yeah, we got rid of that functionality. We're no longer doing upload. Right. And so we took it from the UI, but all the functionality is still there. So having that ability to be able to have somebody come in and say, you know what, I looked at your site, and while you guys on the blue side said, no, we don't do file uploads anymore. On the red side, I said, yeah, you do, do file <laughs> uploads, and here's the problem, right? And that's what we're missing, right? It's that whole picture. You know, we're never looking at the entire thing. We're so granular that so much stuff that we should be looking at, we miss. Well, and, and this is where the whole idea of purple teaming, purple nerple, um, <laughs> blue purple team testing, it is stuck in my head. And so, right? So it was funny. And, you know, I, we, we hear this a little bit. I don't really hear purple teaming a lot, right? No, no, no. I, and, I, I believe that Dave Kennedy is who came up with kind of really started pushing that whole purple purple uh purple team you know and so it was funny because not to take you know kevin say he mentioned he's like yeah purple teaming and he's talking about he's like dave kennedy came up with this idea and 
you know, I'm like I trying to give credit. No, I, you know, I mean, like, I'm and it makes sense, to... right? And I, but I was like, I'm sitting here because we share an office, right? So I'm sitting here listening, and I'm like, what are you talking about? You talked about this five years ago, at least, and it, but it was called something else. And, and I so, said, no, I didn't. What are you talking about? <laughs> so and I was like, I swear it was blue teaming. And sure enough, he looks through his PowerPoints. He's like, no, no, I did a Google search. Oh, you did a Google I, I did search a Google and search found. And I found where I had given it to the Central Florida ISSA, this talk called Blue Team Testing. right? Because we've often said to our customers, you have to do this. We didn't have a name. For right, it. And, we, and we don't use a name when we talk to our client, but we ask them. Hey, are you getting are you doing this? Right? Like so even though <laughs> we don't technically do purple team testing, we tr we kind of push you into it. Yeah. And say, are you noticing these? Right, because the idea here is is that you can test them separate. You know, like James said, you can have a blue team exercise, maybe a sand table exercise or tabletop exercise or whatever you want to call it, but that's a disconnect. And doing this testing where where a the blue team can actually say to the red team, hey, this is what I saw. What the heck was that? <laughs> right? Like, what did yeah. you do that caused that? I mean, we did a test once. <laughs> as we were testing, the company got compromised. And they got compromised against a system we hadn't gotten to yet, right? But they called us up and they said, hey, we're seeing these alerts. Is that you? No, not me yet. <laughs> right? <laughs> Stop the test. Let's yeah. not let, right? It, it, it opens up those eyes <laughs> yeah, it's for what we're doing. But there are some challenges to it. Absolutely. You know, and to me, the biggest one, and I'll, we don't have it as the first bullet point on here, but we've kind of mentioned it a few times, uh, especially with the example of the antivirus, is sticking to the current policies and procedures that you already have in place. The goal isn't to say, you know what, I know that the red team is testing, so I'm not going to do this alert. No, we want to make sure that if we're sending you a brute force attack and you've got a policy in place that says, if we get this attack, we need to block that IP address, do this, do that, alert this person, right. that that all happens. So when we go back to our counterpart and say, hey, did you guys get this alert? He'd say, you know what? The alert goes to this guy. Let me find out. Yes, he received this alert. And... It actually went through. Right. We don't want somebody finding out and saying, you know what? I know the red team's testing. Somebody ignore Screw it. those guys. Yeah. Either one, I'm going to ignore it because that's eh, just the red team when it possibly could be <laughs> somebody, somebody else, else actually attacking. Or two, being that guy that's like, you know what? We don't have a plan for this, but brute force attack, I'm going to block your IP address. Yeah. Right? Remember and that one test where the guy, we sent them our IP addresses? And he immediately put in the firewall to drop all of our traffic. <laughs> Man, he was pissed when we used that other server. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, you're right. You you get an instant reaction with it <clears throat> because I'm telling you to look at it, just like the antivirus guy, right? Yeah. I'm telling you to look at it. Now, all of a sudden, <coughs> you take actions you normally wouldn't have taken. Yeah. And it gives you more of a false sense of security that, no, way, I'm really, look at that. I mean, we blocked that attack i caught that no problem and you know management Dude, this is awesome we're ready for this Dude. and it's like no you're not you only caught that because <clears throat> we told you we were testing now one exception to the sticking to their policies i'm perfectly fine with hey our policy says we have blocked the ip address but we know the ip address of the pen tester so we're not going to block that one we're going to follow the rest of the procedure we're going to do the notifications we're going to but we're not going to block it because we want we have a limited testing window. But we, but look, I hate to disagree with you I, on a webcast. I understand, <laughs> but I want to let me give a qualifier there, right? Based on knowing that in advance, making that decision in advance. Hey, we're going to test everything else except for the shun for this reason. I'm, I'm saying that there are times where that's okay. The, the reason I would disagree, okay, with that is that. Same thing with the smoke detector, same with the, right? If you've got a policy and the ability to block an IP address, yeah. I want to validate that the blocking works. I agree. So having the ability to say, you know what? I'm going to let systems work as they normally work. You got blocked. We say, we got blocked. They're like, great. Our blocking Unblock. worked. Unblock it. 
as long as it's not a week long process. Right, but here's the exception. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna right, give yeah, an example. Yeah. Web app firewall. I I've tested my web app firewall. I know that it's working. Now I want to test the application behind it and make sure that if the web app firewall fails, the application is still running. That would be somewhere where I say, here's an exception. We're going to disable that web app firewall. We're going to do the testing without it. That All I'm saying is there are times where it's okay to make the decision. You don't fully perform. Just like, But I think in that case you are fully performing because your scope yeah. is now limited in saying my scope is not on the WAF. My scope is on the application. I just want to make sure that the people listening right. understand that. Just like if your procedure says call the FBI, you probably don't want to call them on your pet tester. <laughs> Right, like there are certain things, and I've had it happen. Now that step, I would agree with. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. You know. a, a step there, where it's like, hey, now you might want to validate that you got the right number for the FBI. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Right, but you know, from as far as I want to make sure my con all my controls work uh, from a control perspective, right. and they're in scope. I would ge I would lean more towards yeah. saying, you know what, go ahead and block that IP. I agree one hundred percent when you add. And they're in the scope. Right, yeah. 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 The scope is the qualifier there. Yeah. And so, then the other part is the rate. I, I I think that's also a huge problem because so many red team people aren't used to providing that level of detail or they don't truly understand. How many red team people have you met that have never administered a system or developed an app or right. done what they're testing? Right? So you say to them, hey, I got this alert on my server. I don't know what that means. right? They've never seen that error. They don't know what that error means. They don't know what error message their tool or their technique would trigger. Right? Right. You I, know, it's, it's that coordination that you get yeah. that, you know, using the antivirus as an example of file uploads. Right? Yeah. I can sit there from a red team side, right? I can send you a report that says, hey, I was able to upload a virus. <laughs> right? But that's not helpful to a blue team, yeah. right? To sit there and say, look, here's what I did, right? And like for that example, I wrote in an entire example of like, these are the steps taken to be able to upload a file because it wasn't in the UI. Right. The exact steps taken, when I talk about the antivirus piece, it's I upload an ICAR file, right? And here's what an ICAR file is. So that way they've got an idea. So that way they can go back and test it and really understand this is what we did, right? And not just a, hey, you know, I was able to get into this one missing patch and bing bang all the way through the entire system, right? That doesn't help me yeah. from, you know, and so that's why we look at these benefits of what we're doing with this, you know, Barney teaming, the purple dinosaur, eh? trying to get you away from the purple purple. Barney teaming is better. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, the, but we've already kind of started mentioning some of the benefits that we have. And, right, for the blue team, we get the real time information. Rather than having to go back and say, hey, go look at your log, see what you noticed. Look, the red team can say, I'm about to brute force this, or I'm about to run this interpreter <laughs> or Metasploit module. Load up Wireshark, look and see what's coming across your network because this is the type of attack that an attacker is doing. See it in real time. Again, don't react differently in real time, right. but look and see. Hey, did your system capture this? If it didn't, why, why didn't not? it capture it? Right? Is it because yeah. you know we used Veil to encode it and you know there's just no way for us to capture that? Or is it because it just, for some reason, missed a signature. Maybe you, you weren't watching the right part of your network. Maybe your antivirus was out of date. Yeah. And you didn't realize it, right? Yeah. I mean, there's there's all kinds of reasons, but now we've got the way, you know, when we talk about web, well, we're passing stuff through the WAF or something. Okay, is your WAF even in, you know, active mode? You know, here's well, the type of- Like that one test we did where we were testing the WAF and everything we threw at it went through, no issues. And we were working with the clients, like, hey, what the heck's going on here? And it turned out they had put the laugh in learn mode, 
and then run an automated scanner tool <laughs> against it. So this is frame the WAF. Tick or one equals one is valid traffic. Let it through, right? And, you know, <clears throat> they insisted the WAF is in line, the WAF is running, the WAF is going to detect everything. And, and we tried so hard to get that WAF to block something. <laughs> like, it was like, oh, it's not blocking. What the heck? <laughs> right? You know, I mean, you have to have real stuff coming across. And it's a chance for the, the blue team, the, the, the inside guys, to start understanding more of the, the newer tech techniques, yeah. right? You, you've built up this wall for everything known. But hey, wait a minute. Man, these guys are doing this. I mean, that upload functionality, <clears throat> well, I wouldn't have caught that because yep. it was planned functionality within the return, right? It, <laughs> it's stuff that existed, but people wouldn't have thought to try that. So you're getting more exposure to your internal teams yep. that you normally wouldn't get just by just saying, hey, guys, let's pretend this IP is hitting us hard. What should we do? Yeah, or you, know, you also get to understand truly how your response procedures interact, right? right? Uh, I, I've been there where I was at a company. They got a virus. It started spreading like crazy. I mean, it, it took the company down for three days. And one of the main reasons was is that all of the different groups that were involved didn't know how to talk to each other, right? right. Uh, it, it overwhelmed the network with traffic. We, we couldn't even do DNS lookups internally, right? And all of our phones were voice over IP. It's all based <laughs> on the network, which is now down, right? And a whole bunch of the IP people had taken their cell phone numbers out of the address book, the corporate address book, which it was hard for us to get to anyways because of network traffic, but because they didn't want to be bothered by people. Right. And, and so do you know who that point person is on the Unix team or the desktop support team? Do you know who to reach out to and say, hey, what the heck's going on here? Yeah. You know? And so from a red team perspective, right, the benefits of knowing that, you know, you're working with the other side kind of hand in hand, right? Again, the goal here is that they're not doing something out of the norm. Yep. Right, that you can still get a valid test in, but you're testing to make sure. And so, as I mentioned, we, when we do our testing, I mean, we constantly ask, hey, did you see that? Did you guys get any alert that I, I threw 10,000 requests at the login screen? No, we didn't get one. Guess what? Finding, right? Because, yeah. you know, although it's not really the red team thing to sit there and say, hey, look, you're missing internal controls. My thing is to say, you don't have any brute force. But to take that a step further and say, look, internally, I can already tell you're missing controls in here. Provide better. It's providing better feedback. Yeah. You know, it, it's more, I'm more helpful to a company to say, yes, you don't have any brute force from a technical standpoint, but you also are missing monitoring, right? And that's what companies need to get, right? We need to understand, <laughs> well, what part of the process are we missing back here? Oh, you're right. We should have had some alert come out. How do we do that alert? And it's not my job to sit here and tell you how to do all of this, but to open your eyes that it's missing there yep. is is key to me. And you know, being able to demonstrate this is how this attack works. And when we do find something that's not being caught, well, do they have the capability to implement it? Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes you can put a rule in and say, you know what, we just ran this attack. It's a known attack amongst attackers. But, you know, obviously a lot of the defenders don't know about it. I ran it. You didn't catch it. You saw what the traffic was. They create a rule. They go, they we go. run it again. Did you catch it? Plus, I mean, I don't know about you, but personally I feel like pen tests are not cheap, right? We're not talking about $100 out of your budget. Right. We're talking about something you have to budget. And if... If I come in and because you're not doing stuff and you're changed the way things work, I spend the full five days picking low hanging fruit because there's just so much of it out there, right? I don't think that really provides a huge benefit to people. Whereas if we're working with the blue team, building their procedures, there's a better chance that we're going to find those one offs that will give a, oh, damn, we hadn't thought of that. Yeah, well, while the <clears throat> excitement and the wow factor of, I just stole all the social security numbers from your database is yeah. good, 
right? I mean, yeah, that's exciting and everybody loves to see it. It helps kind of proof point stuff or management that you're really the problem. The information that follows that and that surrounds that where you can provide that, this is how you could better identify this, protect against it, right? Because, I mean, we want to tell you how to protect, right? Like, hey, you could do this to help protect yeah. against this attack, but what are you doing internally? If this happens and your first protection controls get bypassed, do you have a way to get notified? Do you have a plan to do all this? And, and as we start doing that, we're going to start making security better because we'll get better reaction times. We'll have more confidence that our controls actually work, <laughs> right? Rather than just saying, yeah, I got a smoke detector out there. Yeah. Did you check the battery in it? Nah. <laughs> have you ever tested it? <clears throat> no, but I got one, right? And that's, I mean, Checkbox. You have a fire, you know, do you have a smoke detector in your house? Yeah. The fire inspector doesn't come to my house and make sure I have batteries in them or anything like that, right? I mean, there's no, no. nobody's checking that. They're just, it, it's like compliance, right? Yep, I got it. Yeah. Do you maintain it? No. No. It's 150 years old. I painted <laughs> over it at one point. <laughs> By accident. <laughs> That's okay, I, right? I completely <laughs> covered it in silicone. Yeah. So no smoke could get to it. It would, it would go off at the oddest times. <laughs> I mean, it was a fire or something. It would just drive you crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, really, it's a goal at getting a more in-depth, comprehensive assessment. So that really kind of wraps up our, our, our portion of this. Um, so we'd like to open it up if you have questions. You know, if you're using this type of testing, you know, where you're working hand in hand, uh, anything like that, feel please feel free to send it in the chat window. We'll look at, we'll um, try to respond as best we can. So we'll give a few minutes for questions. Um, again, it's not a new concept, but, you know, it's <laughs> something that we often see is kind of missing yeah. when we see a lot of these assessments going on. And it'd be nice to see more people pushing for that collaboration between the two teams. I think you're going to see a lot less, I just want somebody to come in and do a pen test, right? Or they'll get people coming in doing a pen test, but they're going to expect more from it than just a, here's, here's what we were able to get to and here's the steps we took to get there, yeah. right? They're going to want more information regarding how did it really happen? What can we do to prevent this? Um, and we're going to lose that need for just somebody that can get in and that's it, right? That's great if you're, you know, working for the NSA or somebody who, you know, <laughs> needs somebody for warfare. But when you're talking about just, you know, your business, having somebody come in and test, you know, I don't need somebody to come in and drop O days. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I don't need somebody to do that. I need somebody to come in and explain to me what the problem is. sure what 59 means. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll at this point I'm going to say uh, we appreciate everybody's time. Uh, we're, we've been recording this. We will be putting it up on our YouTube channel uh, probably the next day or two depending on our timing. Yeah, it should um, be pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at the Advanced Burp class in a couple weeks if you're signed up for that. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at secureideas.com. Thank you. All right. My recording is done.